Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, that means the darkness is over. Father God, we thank you for allowing us to be here this morning. You know, I was just talking with some other people this morning about the tragedy of the world today. You know, it's not it's not a good thing when you wish bad for bad people. Okay, somebody don't know what I'm talking about. It's not a good thing when you don't have any remorse for bad happening to bad people. Scary times when we don't feel some type of empathy for some folks that mean us no good. But God made it so divinely purposed that he would bring his chosen people to a chosen place in time to give him a chosen type of worship for protection for all of us. If you miss what I said, God is still in the protection business. See, because even though somebody might have got grazed, nobody else got hurt. It could have been worse. It could have been worse. It could have been worse. All so grateful to be in the house of the Lord this morning. You know, I could be somewhere else doing some other things, but I'm so grateful that I'm right here, right now, doing this thing. Giving praise and honor to a, a worthy God. A God that has shown mercy above mercy. Grace above grace. woo Thank you for an opportunity to say thank you. Thank you for an opportunity to say thank you. Thank you for an opportunity to say thank you. Because it could have been worse. I know where I've been. I didn't been where I've been. I know what I've seen. I didn't feel what I felt. And I know today it could have been worse. See, that's the grace I'm talking about. When it could have been, it should have been, but it wasn't because he loved me just enough. If these walls could talk, if the floorboards could shake, they would scream out, Hosanna! Worthy to be praised. Worthy to be worshipped. Worthy to be served. Worthy to be praised. And because of that, I'm so glad that we are at worship.
Good morning, everyone. We're blessed to be able to gather here again today to worship God and know that he knows us, each one by name. And he loves us so. He loves us so much that he sent messengers to tell us about his great love for us. Peter, James, Andrew, they all come for that purpose. And because of that purpose being given to us, we're able to assemble here this morning. Assemble here to give praise to God. Now, our lesson this morning is coming from the book of Isaiah. And I'm going to ask Sister Leontine if she will do that. Chapter 43, right, Sister Leontine? So would you please come? And I'll do the prayer. Well, it, it just tickles me to see all these folks here in church. Amen. When they put in some things like that. So we thank the Lord for that. We thank for the new, new ones that have come. Great, graciously glad to see y'all. And please keep coming back again. And we see there are more door, people come through the door at this very moment. How wonderful God is. Yes, there's been some very difficult things that happened, some things that we don't know or understand, but it's all in the book. If we want the answers, it's here in the book. So, Sister Leontine, if you would please read the scripture, I'll do the prayer. Right? Thank you. Our scripture lesson comes from Isaiah chapter 43, verses 8 through 13. When you have it, will you please stand and acknowledge it with an amen, and please remain standing to after the prayer. Isaiah chapter 43, verses 8 through 13. Bring forth the blind people that have eyes, and the deaf that have ears. Let all the nations be gathered together, and let the people be assembled, who among them can declare this, and show us formal things. Let them bring forth their witnesses, that they may be justified, or let them hear and say it is truth. Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. I even, I am the Lord, and beside me there is no other, no Savior. I have declared and have saved and I have showed when there was no strange God among you. Therefore ye are my witnesses saith the Lord that I am God. Yes. Yea, before the day was I am he and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work and who shall let it and who shall let it? Thank you, Lord, for your word. Amen. Your word is the truth, Amen. Heavenly Father. And thank you for it. Has anyone here been blessed this week? Yes. I have. And because we've been blessed, we're here to give thanksgiving to God. Yes. He knows us already, each and every one of us. He knows our needs. He knows the things that he's brought us through. He has made it possible for us to assemble here this morning. Let us go and give thanks to him now by bowing our heads. Our Heavenly Father above, thank you for this day. Yes. 
We look around and there's no one else that can create a day but you. We can live in one. We can do things with one. But you're the one that made it. Those that live in high-rise apartments and combinations, those that live underneath the subway tracks, all have this in common, that God loves us all. Yes. And he's worried about us and concerned about us. Yes. We come to you, Heavenly Father, giving thanks, giving, and not just in our words, but in our actions. I can talk a little good game, but what do I do? That's what the Lord wants to know. Do I bow it to him in love and sincerity? Let it go further than the doors of this church, yes. but go out through everywhere that Jesus loves us so. He loves us so much that he allows us to talk to the Father through him, which is the only way that we can talk to the Father is through the Son. Yes. And when we bow our knees to talk to Christ, we in sincerity say, our Lord, our God, our Father, who is like you? None. None whatsoever. So we come, Heavenly Father, this morning, thanking you for allowing us to be here at Simple and Bear Glass Baptist Church, thanking you for blessing not just us, but the people to the left and the right of us, yes. because you're the one that's done it. It's you that we hear from each and every day, and we listen for your voice. Some days are, seem to be a bit rough than others, but you know what? God, you're the one that brings us through. Thank you for doing that. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, for blessing those that are ill in our congregation, that you will help them, Heavenly Father, to be able to return to church, that you will show them ways that they can share your love with others. It all comes from you. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that you will look towards the next day because you know what the next day has for it. You've made it, so you know all about it. We know the previous days we can do nothing about, but the coming days you made a place for us to come and worship you. Let us worship you in spirit and in truth, and we pray in the name of the only person we can pray in, the Messiah, the Son of God. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and ask these things. Amen. And all of God's people said, amen. We're grateful unto God for your presence here today. We don't take your presence for granted. We want you to know that we love you. And ain't nothing you can do about it. Amen. So thank you for being here. We want to uh, certainly uh, pray for those who lost their life on yesterday. Pray for those who were injured uh, in Butler, Pennsylvania. Uh, we, uh, it's, it's a testimony to the fact that gun violence needs to be curtailed, and at least one way is the laws can change. Amen. But not only do we want to pray for those in Butler, Pennsylvania, but we want to pray for the 10-year-old here in Louisville, Kentucky, who got shot on last evening, and the young man who got shot in the Portland area as well. We want to lift them in prayer. I think some folk have just done lost their mind, and it's time for the church to raise not only our voice, but the power that God has given us uh, to witness to his goodness, his grace, and his mercy. So we ask your prayers for, for those. Uh, one of our longtime members, uh, Claudman Anderson, has uh, requested that we pray for him. He is incarcerated, but there's a possibility for him to get a pardon. And so we want to pray that uh, that
that be the will of God. And uh, let's, uh, let's lift him in prayer as he goes through. Uh, he sent some information. If you want to contact him, we will get that to you later. It was too much for us to put on, on the screen. So please keep him in our prayers. As well as uh, we are grateful and thankful for our own uh, Elder Derek Pohl, who is in training and will be in training up until the end of August. Uh, on uh, last week, he was promoted from Staff Sergeant E6 to First uh, to First Sergeant E7. Amen. And. Uh, to God be the glory for promotions, and I think this training has some to do with uh, once you get promoted, certain trainings that you have to go to. So we're going to pray while he's away and praying that his safety and his safe return in August. Pray for Sister Raven and uh, all of the family. Amen. Of uh, Elder Dirk Poe, if you're listening and looking uh, right now, then we want you to know that we're lifting you up in prayer. Amen. Uh, we will have our, on the 22nd, I believe Monday, the 22nd, we will have our quarterly business meeting on Monday, the 22nd. That will be at uh, 7 p.m. And uh, we want all of you to come and be a part so you can hear straight from the horse's mouth. Amen. It's a regularly scheduled business meeting. Let us not forget Friends and Family Day. Sister Vanessa Stevenson came to us on last week, and she's put some stuff together for us. Let's celebrate Friends and Family Day. Her request was that we pack the house out, that you invite family, you invite friends. We're just going to come and have a good time. She has certain things scheduled for us on Saturday, I believe. I believe it's going to be here and on our lot across the street, certain activities on that Saturday. Come on out and let's have a good time. But most importantly, if there was ever a time that uh, we need to display and show and share the love of God, it is right now. And so let us keep that in mind. Many of you know that uh, the tornado that hit on July the 4th really did damage to the Baptist Fellowship Center. We're going through uh, a lot um, of uh, the changes that has to be gone, gone through. You see the pictures on the screen. Uh, we are making progress. But I, I got an estimate to repair the roof, and it said $77,046. Amen. To prepare the roof, $77,000. That's just to repair the roof. I don't know what this bill is going to be of uh, those who are there now mitigating and drying the place out and tearing out walls and ceilings and those type of things that has to be done. So my ask of our church family is that you would consider giving a donation to the Baptist Fellowship Center from our church. Amen. And if you would make your checks payable to the church and just put uh, Baptist Fellowship Center uh, relief on the memo line. We would appreciate that so very, very much. We'll collect for the next three or four weeks. I will be putting together a strategy probably in the next four or five days going forward, looking at the law so that we can get our ministries of our youth, our daycare, our parent ministry, uh, our food ministry, our clothes ministry, our housing ministry back up and back running, amen, as quickly as possible. So thank you so much. You've always been kind. Whenever I've asked, you've been so kind to, to donate. So thank you so very, very much. I think that's all that I have. Uh, if I'm not forgetting anything, uh, there was an uh, announcement uh, Amen. I think this is related to our friends and family day. Amen. Good morning, everybody. All right, today is Sunday. Everybody knows that. We have one week to get our T-shirts printed to the, to the printer. So we got to sign up today to get everybody's, their sizes and 
all shirts are ten dollars. So it's not gonna cost you but ten dollars for whoever wants one. Just me after church, and then we'll go from there. Amen. One other thing I did not want to forget, so thank you, Ms. Chuck, for, for reminding me. Arissa, y'all know Sister Paulette's daughter, passed last week. I've been last Sunday. Her uh, celebration will be at the Emmanuel Baptist Church, uh, 37th and Broadway, this coming Saturday, uh, the 20th. The 20th, July the 20th, I think the wake is going to be from 11 to 1, and then the services are going to be at 1. You all remember Sister Pauletta. She was our musician for several years and has always been a friend to, the, uh, to our church family, and we consider her family. If you know the story of Arissa, you would know that she had a horrible stroke, went into a coma, and stayed in that coma for almost eight years. And then uh, nine years, and then there was movement. She could answer. Uh, I think it was the calm before the storm. I think it was God giving her an opportunity to say hello and goodbye uh, and so long, and I'll see you later to her family. You do know she had a child when she, she was pregnant when she had uh, the stroke, and um, the child was able to be, to be saved. And I believe the child now has got to be nine years old or eight years old somewhere in there so to God be the glory for that but I, I just want us to understand that if you think you got it tough if you think you got it rough trust me somebody is going through a whole lot more than you and I amen thank you for uh, all that you do thank you to our band and to this praise team pray for sister smizer she's in atlanta she'll be back in here tomorrow she's just going off everywhere leaving me just don't even don't even care she said look you stay there i'm gone i'm i'm out of here but she went to celebrate birth birthdays of our uh, of our grandson, our eldest grandson, and so we thank God that she was able to make it to Atlanta safely, and she'll be back in the morning. Amen? Amen. Come on, praise team. a little praise. Let's go right from the top. Speak to my heart. Speak to my heart. Holy Spirit. Give me the words. That will bring you words on the wings. Words on the wings of the Speak to my heart. Speak to my heart. Holy Spirit. Message of love. Message of love. To and care. Lifting my heart. Lifting my heart from this spirit. How you love. Lord, speak to my heart. Speak to my heart. Give me the words. Give me the words that will bring life. Words on the wings. Speak to my heart. Speak to my heart. Holy Spirit. 
Message of love. Lift in my heart. If I can't hear from you, then I'll know what to do. I won't go alone. I'll never go on my own. Just let your spirit guide and let your word abide. Speak to my heart, Lord. Give me your holy word. If I can't hear from you. I know what to do. I won't go alone. I never go on my own. Just let your spirit God and let your word three parts speak. Speak to my heart, Lord. Give me your holy word. If I can't hear from you, and then I know what to do. I know I'm going. I never go on my own. Just let your spirit guide. Let's take it up. And you let your speak to my heart. Speak to my heart, Lord.
Come on, you all do better than that. If you really want God to speak to your heart. Amen. Then you ought to, you ought to, you ought to do better than that. We praise God. We honor him. We lift his most holy and righteous name. If you would be so kind to make your way once more and again to the 43rd book of Isaiah. Isaiah 43. When you find this, say, I got it. If you don't have it, say, I'm looking for it. I'm going to wait on you. Amen. Isaiah chapter 43. I will be reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. If you have a different version, the words might be slightly different, but the meaning and the message is the same. I just want to lift one verse in your hearing for our time together this morning. That's verse number 10. Isaiah 43 and verse number 10, we find these words, you are my witnesses, says the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me, there was no God form nor shall there be after me. Pray with me, God, we love you so much. We appreciate the fact that you have permitted us once more and again to make our way to the house of prayer. We come, God, as you allow us uh, to be in your presence. We pray that you would grip us, grab us, hold us, hug us, rock us in the cradle of your arms, even to the point that we can hear and feel the beat of your heart. We pray, God, that you would bind the devil right now. Don't allow him to interfere nor interrupt with this time that you have preordained for us to be together. And God, if we have anything in our hearts that should not be there, I pray that you would move it as far as the east is from the west. And then, God, give me your preacher what I need for this preaching moment. We ask it all in the mighty, miraculous, and matchless name of Jesus, we pray. And all of God's people said, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. For just a few moments, I want to talk to us from the thought, it's your story to tell. It's your story to tell. It's your story to tell. It has been determined that stories engage our brains differently than simple statements of fact. Neuroscientists have shown that stories can stimulate multiple areas of the brain, creating more, a more robust and more detailed memory. When people hear a story, they are much more likely to retain the information and recall it later because stories create context and emotional connections. Stories create empathy by allowing listeners to imagine themselves in the storyteller's shoes. They help bridge gaps in understanding and create a shared human experience. Historically, Stories have been used to pass down culture, values, and moral lessons. They, simp they, they simplify, simplify complex ideas into easily digestible narratives that can be more readily understood and internalized. Stories of triumph, struggle, faith, or transformation can inspire and motivate others to overcome their own challenges. They, they provide role models and real-life examples of perseverance and, and hope. People can, can learn about different experiences, perspectives, and cultures through stories. 
uh, that broadens uh, our understanding and combat, combats ignorance or, or prejudice. You see, sharing stories can help build a sense of community. People telling their stories, especially in group settings, can create a shared identity and cultivate a sense of belonging. Uh, it, 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 it encourages uh, others to share their stories, creating a tapestry uh, of shared experiences and uh, community or communal growth. I, I come by to tell you that sharing personal stories of one's relationship with God and the impact of divine intervention can be an effective tool for evangelism. It, it makes the gospel message personal and relatable. Stories that uh, become testimonies serve as living proof of God's presence and power, often reaching hearts in ways that abstract theology and all of those uh, high-lifted words just can't do. When people hear how God has worked in someone else's life, uh, it can provide them with hope and encouragement in their own walk of faith. It reassures them that they are not alone and that God is active and that God is present. In other words, your story of faith, child of God, can uplift and strengthen others who are facing their own spiritual challenges. Telling your own spiritual journey helps with spiritual growth. It encourages self-reflection, gratitude, and a deeper understanding of your relationship with God. When you and I are honest and open about our good and bad experiences, it builds trust uh, and it builds transparency. Uh, the, the bottom line uh, is that telling your story is a powerful tool that serves several uh, functions, uh, from educating and inspiring to building connections uh, and promoting. Uh, when it comes to sharing your personal story about your relationship with God, the impact is and can be profound. Your story, your story serves as a testimony that reveals God's character, action, and love, offering hope and encouragement and promoting uh, authentic relationships both with God and with your fellow man. This one verse, y'all ain't saying nothing. I, I would do a whole litany. This one verse, which is tagged to teach us today is spoken by the prophet Isaiah. Uh, it, it carries a profound message that continues to sound throughout the ages. You are my witnesses, says the Lord, and my servant who I, whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God form, nor shall there be after me. This verse affirms uh, God's unique sovereignty and the calling of his people to witness this truth. Your story is a witness that God is God and there is none like him nowhere that you go. In other words, your story is a story that God wants you to tell. So why don't you tell your story because your story is for you to tell. You got to understand that the things that you have been through, the things that you have dealt with, the situations that have come into your life, however they got there, is still a part of your story. And if you're still here in your right mind with a portion of health and strength, then you ought to tell somebody about your story. The problem is we want people to think that we always been where we are right now, that we've always been in the church, that we've always been holy, that we've never done anything wrong, that we've never made a mistake, that we've never made a bad decision, but the reality 
way is uh, that all of us have got some skeletons in the closet. All of us got some stuff that we done that we ain't proud of. All of us uh, got some things that we wish we could uh, do over. In other words, uh, you got to understand that if you're real with yourself, uh, that you ought to be able to tell your story. And your story is not so much of what you did and how you messed it up as much as it is how God made you whole from the situation that you were in. I, I'm simply trying to say that you got a story to tell uh, and if you ain't scared uh, if you ain't worried about what people are going to say about your story if you're not concerned uh, uh, that somebody's going to say well I thought you was better than that I thought that you was bigger than that I didn't know that you was the one that went down that road if you ain't afraid to tell your story then you'll be able to tell somebody yes uh, I messed up but God picked me up yes so I went out but God brought me back yes I did some dumb stuff but God delivered me is there anybody in here right now that's got a story to tell how God delivered me God 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 establishes his unique divinity and calls his chosen people to witness and testify to his unparalleled sovereignty and ex eternal experience. All that simply saying uh, is that God's sovereignty means uh, that God can choose what God wants to choose. God can help who God wants to help. God can deliver who God wants to deliver. You see, God can make the decision so it don't matter about what nobody else say. Because there's some folk out here uh, who would want God not to deliver you because they seem to enjoy you staying in the place that you are. They seem to like you when you are down and waddling in the mud. Uh, they seem to get some kind of pleasure out of your pain and they don't want God God to move but if you don't mind telling somebody that when I was hurting he helped me when I was down he lifted me up when I lost my ever loving mind he brought me back and gave me peace is there anybody in here that don't mind testifying. Uh, I used to wear it all night long, but now I got peace. And with my peace came my joy. Is there anybody in here that's got some joy uh, in your life? You uh, you ain't where you used to be. Uh, and because you're not, you, you got joy. You don't do what you used to do. And because you don't, you got some joy in your life. What's your story? Because it's your story to tell. <laughs> Preach, Reverend. I'm doing the best I can. God uh, establishes his unique divinity and calls his chosen people to witness and testify to his unparalleled sovereignty and his eternal experience. In other words, you didn't go what you went through for nothing. Okay, yeah, okay, okay. I mean, you, you went through what you went through because God had already known what you was going to do. So he decided that he would permit you to do it so that when you was like humped and dumped and fell off the wall and you had all these pieces, he would be the one that puts you back together again. Is there anybody in here besides me that can testify? I'm a humped and dumped and that fell off the wall. But thanks be to my God, he scooped down and put me up and put me back together again. Our, our story and our witness of the one and only God speaks to the denial and rejection of false gods and idols which cannot claim existence before or after uh, the one and true God. Uh, in other words, Isaiah wants us to know when God uh, was telling us through Isaiah uh, uh, that uh, you need to testify uh, that your money ain't your God. 
uh, that your car ain't your God, that your house ain't your God, that all of those are false, uh, that addiction ain't your God, uh, that person that puts you down ain't your God, uh, that person that won't give you a helping hand ain't your God, uh, it ain't but one God, uh, and everything else is a false God. Uh, Isaiah, as he, as he ministers during a stormy period in Israel's history, uh, mar uh, marked by, by political instability uh, and threats from surrounding empires such as Assyria and Babylon, which were uh, times uh, indicated when idol worship uh, and a departure from depending uh, on God existed. In other words, there's times in our life, if you're not careful, that an idol God will lure you over and cause you to worship it rather than worshiping uh, the one, the only, uh, the true Yahweh, the true Elohim, the true God. Is there anybody in here besides me that can testify? I know what you're talking about because there was some stuff out there that I was worshiping uh, and it led me down the, uh, the wrong path. There were some people out there that I was worshiping and they led me down uh, the wrong path. But thanks be uh, to God uh, uh, that he came by my way, uh, that he showed up on my doorstep, that he knocked on my front door. And when I heard him knock, I opened the door and let him in. And when I let him in, he turned my whole situation around. Is there anybody that don't mind testifying when I let God in? He turned my whole situation around. Babylon, where there were idol worships, um, they, Israel began to, to depend on God. Isaiah's writings aim to call the people back to faithfulness, and to remind them, you and I, of God's power and of God's unparalleled uh, decision-making. Isaiah uh, wanted to reaffirm uh, God's decision that regardless of what somebody else says, God can do what he wants to do. And... and and, and, and if I can pray, prophetically uh, pause right there and say that if you didn't get that peace, here it is, what God has for me. <laughs> okay, y'all ain't getting it. Y'all folk ain't shouting in here. Uh, I, I, I said what God has for me. Uh, it is, and guess what? Ain't nothing you can do about it. Uh, uh, what God has for me, you can't take it away. Uh, what God has for me, you can't stop my blessing. Uh, what God has for me ain't a almost cussed thing you can do about it uh, because what God has for me it is for me he sought to remind them of their unique status Isaiah did as God's chosen witnesses uh, and the downside of worshiping any other idol God and, and, and so and so and so through Isaiah, God says, you are my witnesses, says the Lord. That's enough right there. Yeah, you, 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 you are my witnesses. Now, if I say it, it, it ain't going to mean much. But if God says it, uh, it's going to mean a, a whole lot. Uh, God calls his people to bear witness to his truth uh, and his deeds. Uh, uh, there it is right there. Uh, see, your story is all intertwined and wrapped up uh, in your witness because your witness is what God has done for you. Uh, your witness is uh, what God has done uh, that could nobody else uh, do. God has called you uh, to be a witness. That's why I say all the time when you get close to God when you get some word in you when you learn how God operates uh, uh, you'll understand that when life throws uh, uh, you a fastball uh, that's your opportunity uh, to knock it out of the park uh, when life throws you a curveball uh, that's your opportunity to hit a home run and so don't be afraid of the fastballs that come in your life don't be afraid of the curveballs that comes in your life because when life is life uh, it gives you an opportunity to hit a home run for the master. Is there anybody in here uh, that's willing to stand at the plate and swing? Yeah, 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 yeah. He says, 
He says, you are my witness. This is just one verse. I hope you ain't closed your Bibles. And then he says, and my servant whom I have chosen. God has a particular purpose for his chosen people. And that's emphasizing uh, their, their integral role in his plan. God had a plan for your life before you was born. When you was conceived, God had a plan for your life. I didn't know what God's plan was. Uh, I didn't know what God had in store for me. Uh, but when I got to those stages of life, when I had to make a decision, uh, uh, God already knew which direction I was going in. Can I let you in on a little secret? I ain't always been in somebody's pulpit. I say all the time, I say all the time, and y'all need to catch this, uh, but two type of people in my opinion, and that is the caught and the uncaught. Uh, oh, y'all not, not hearing me, y'all not hearing me. Yo, I, some, of the, some, of the, some of the so called saints are sitting up uh, all pretty and sedity. The only problem is they just didn't get caught. It ain't that they ain't done anything wrong, it's just that they didn't get caught. And so we, none of us got any right to look down on any of the rest of us because we all come from the same place. The Bible says uh, that we are all sinners uh, saved by grace. Uh, uh, that none of us have, have come through this life and not uh, sinned. So, so, that, so that you may know. I'm still in verse number 10. So that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. The knowledge of God and belief in him is the foundation of your witness. Yeah, that is. It, it, it's right there. What you know about God is what you can testify to. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, we spend too much time trying to tell somebody else's story. When you got a story to tell. You see, you can't tell my story like I can tell my story. And I can't tell your story like you can tell your story. Uh, because the old saint will tell you, you weren't there when I was down in the gutter and God picked me up. You weren't there when I was on the edge about to lose my mind and blow my brains out and God stopped me, turned my situation around. You weren't there when I was hungry and couldn't find nobody to give me a mercy of bread. You weren't there when God came through, picked me up, turned me around, placed my feet on a solid ground so you can't tell my story mm. like I can tell my story. And it's your story to tell. Uh, before me, Isaiah says, no God was formed, nor will there be one after me. In other words, God is saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. God asserts his eternal and unique existence in contrast to idols, a temporal and artificial nature. In other words, he said, everything else is fake. You talking about fake news? Everything else is fake. And so he, he's trying to tell us that uh, we are to be his witnesses, and we witness we got by telling our story, and that you ought not be ashamed to tell somebody that God brought you through. You ought not be ashamed. I believe that the reason why that we have some of our young people doing what they're doing is because we ain't told them that we've been there, done that, and wrote the book. They think they're doing something. They think that they're the first ones uh, to ever come this way. But we've been there, uh, and, and we've done that. Matter of fact, not only did we do it, and not only have we been there, uh, we wrote the book, and we got the trophy. We wrote the book, and we got the t-shirt. We wrote the book, and, and we got the scars to prove it. Uh, that's the reason why we put on our clothes, because we got some scars. Uh, up under here uh, that will testify uh, that we ain't always been so good. We ain't always been where we are right now. Is there anybody uh, in here that can testify? I got some scars. Uh, uh, can I, is there anybody in here that can say uh, I got I, I got some star, scars as well? Can I can I can I tell you who else got some scars? Uh, uh, Jesus has some scars. 
Uh, the Bible says uh, that uh, uh, when Thomas didn't believe his story, uh, that he said, come here, uh, Thomas, and, and look at the scars in my hands. Uh, look at the scars in my feet. Uh, look at the scars uh, in my side. Is there anybody in here uh, that's got some scars uh, uh, that could testify uh, to the wounds that you've been able to endure? And... Uh, and, 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 so, and so not only, not only uh, are we witnesses uh, to his word, but, but secondly, we, uh, we are chosen for his cause. In, 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 in other words, uh, he, he chose us uh, to be a witness for him. Now, we chose uh, to do some of the things that we've done, but he chose to enter into our lives and make us better. And when he, he chose us, he chose us so that we can go and tell somebody uh, our story because uh, it's your story uh, to, to tell. Because uh, ain't nobody got a story like you, like you got. God chose us for a significant purpose uh, to know, believe, and understand who God is. You see, I, I don't care uh, what uh, anybody says. If you ain't never been through nothing, you really don't know how good God can be in your life. If you ain't never done nothing, you ain't had no business and God brought you through that thing, uh, uh, then, then, then you don't know uh, the power that God can have over one's life when we surrender. If, if you ain't never made a mistake, God bless you. Uh, I need to figure out what you're doing because I got a whole stock of mistakes and bad decisions uh, in my life and I'm so glad that God looked beyond my faults and my mistakes and supplied every one of my needs. Is there anybody besides uh, me and Austin in here uh, that uh, are thankful unto God that he looked beyond uh, uh, my faults and he supplied every one of my needs. Uh, and he took care of me when I didn't have sense enough to take care of myself. I I'm about done. I'm keeping you too long. Uh, uh, not only, not only, uh, not only are we witnesses uh, of the word, and not only are we chosen for a cause, but in this third, uh, in this third point, uh, we uh, uh, are, are, are testifying to his eternal existence. Our witness is to his eternal existence. That, that's, that's the C part of verse number 10. God declares uh, his eternal nature, uh, distinguishing him from all the false God, his existence before and after all things uh, uh, it comments on and it speaks to his supremacy. So uh, what is there for us to do? Uh, we got to trust in God's eternal, unchanging nature in the midst uh, of the trials and tribulations uh, of our lives. Is there anybody in here that's gone through some stuff and you just said to yourself, I don't know how you're going to do it, God, uh, but I'm going to trust you. I, I, I don't know how you... You're going to fix it, but uh, I'm going to trust you. I don't know how you're going to do it, but God, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm going to trust you. So I just came by uh, this morning, uh, yes, uh, uh, to tell you, child of God, uh, remember that because of your relationship with God, uh, you have a story, and it's your story uh, to tell. Uh, I, I don't know about you, but I, I, I got a story. I, I once was sinking deeper uh, in the sin, uh, uh, headed for the distant shore, but God showed up and lifted me up. I, 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 got, I, I got a story uh, to tell. I, I was about to lose my mind, but God came through and blessed me in spite of me. I got a story to tell. Uh, I, I got word from a doctor that you got cancer come on in and it ain't gonna be long before uh, you're gonna be out of here but that was about uh, 13 years ago I got a story uh, to tell is there anybody in here that's got a story uh, to tell there's some folk who said you ain't gonna never make it but here I stand uh, right now I got a story uh, to tell there were people who said that you ain't no good and we don't even want you around here but I got 
got a story to tell. Uh, there are folk who try to take me to this court and that court, but I got a story uh, to tell. Is there anybody uh, in here that's got a story uh, to tell? Uh, uh, I'm here to tell you that if you would just lean uh, and depend on God, uh, he will uh, make a way out of your no way. Uh, he will uh, take care of you. Uh, I, I got to get out of here, but is there anybody in here besides me and Daryl Boyd uh, that don't mind testifying uh, that I got a story to tell, uh, and I'm going to tell my story. I got a God that's been good to me, who's never left me, nor forsake me, and he walked with me every step of the way. I got a good God, uh, and I'm going to run on uh, and see what the end is going to be. Because uh, I'm trying to make a hundred. Uh, Ninety-nine, I said. Ninety-nine. Uh, Ninety-nine and a half. Uh, just won't do. Uh, if you knew how good God has been to me, uh, you'd shout for me. Uh, and I believe that somebody would testify. Uh, you ain't by yourself, Reverend. Uh, if you knew how God has been good to me, uh, you shout for me. Uh, is there anybody in here that's going to shout for him right now because of his goodness? Uh, is there anybody in here that's going to holler for him right now because of his kindness? Is there anybody in here that's going to throw your head back uh, and say thank you, Jesus, because of his mercy? I'm done, y'all. <laughs> you got a story. So tell your story and here's the last of my story I will trust in the Lord I will trust in the Lord I will trust in the Lord until I die I Will you come, the door is open. That's my story. Ha. How long? Guess what? I'm going to stay on. I'm going to stay on. Mm, I am going to stay home. How long? Mm. Yes, sir. Mm. And even if folk don't like you, guess what? Here, here it is. I am going to treat everybody right. I am going to treat everybody right. I am going to treat everybody right until I die. Will you come? The door is open for you. Hey Amen. Thank you so much. It's your story to tell. So go, go tell your story. Don't be ashamed of where God has brought you from. Tell your story because you don't know how your story is going to influence and impact the lives of somebody else who is struggling and wondering, how am I going to get through this? Amen. Amen and amen. None responded, but there is room for many. If you were watching us on our Facebook Live. 
or on our YouTube live channel, please DM us on our Facebook, comment on our YouTube channel, leave us a message on our website, bradgrassmbc.org. Amen. Thank you for being here today. And please, you got a story. And it's your story to tell. So tell your story. Tell your story. All right, it's offering time. We thank God for all that continues to support as we do each and every a week, and as I say to you each and every week, I ain't in nobody's pocket. I ain't trying to be in nobody's finances. I ain't, I don't know what your bills are, but what I will tell you is whatever God put on your heart to give, whatever that is, if that's a dollar, if that's ten dollars, if that's a hundred, if that's a thousand, whatever it is, do that because listen, this is what God bless. He blesses your obedience. It's not in equal giving. But it is an equal sacrifice. God don't bless your amount. He blesses your obedience because the Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. I, I just love to give because what I discovered is that when you give and you're not looking for anything in return, God always gives you something to give. Amen. I can't give you a dollar if I don't have to. Bless his holy name. And so he prepares and makes a way. As a matter of fact, God not only uh, has given me uh, what I need, but he's given me just about everything I wanted. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm here to tell you, that's why I love giving so much, and I do. So whatever God puts on your heart, you know, and I say all the time, don't y'all don't y'all get hung up. Don't y'all believe those prosperity preachers who talk about you got to sow a seed and send us your rent money, and he's, God's going to trip it. My thing is this, if you got your rent money, pay your rent. <laughs> Amen. Amen. To me, that's just that simple because that means that God has already blessed you to pay your rent. So pay your rent. Whatever God has put on your heart to give, that's what we say to you each and every uh, week. Whatever he puts on your heart, be proud of that. We're not ashamed of whatever God puts on our heart. We're not ashamed of it. And so that's why we hold it up. If you're giving, be a giver of fire. On your device, God bless you. Thank you. Hold up your device. If you sent yours by mail, if you gave yours to somebody that's coming to the in-person worship experience, God bless you. Amen. Don't be, don't be, don't be ashamed of whatever God has given you to give. Let us pray. God, we ask your blessings now upon the hand that's holding the offering. I pray, God, that you would bless their life, bless their home, bless their going in, bless their coming out, bless wherever their feet may trod and everything their hands may touch. Now, God, I pray that you would bless the offering itself, that it can do what needs to be done here at the Beargrass Missionary Baptist Church, that we can continue to run up the King's Highway, telling a dying world that there is a reality in service being a true and a living God. In all of these blessings, we ask them in your name. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Everybody on my right and your left, if you stand and face the outer wall, everybody on my left and your right, if you stand and face the center aisle, we would come down and give as we exit out the side door. Amen. Amen. Oh, God, how we love you so much, and we are grateful and thankful for reminding us that it's our God's people said.